Hey guys, welcome to Tech News Day, and this episode is sponsored by Capterra, and this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. You'll hear more about them from us later in the show, but first, let's look at the news. Bugs! They're disgusting. Ew! I wish they were all dead. Uh-oh, well, I'm getting word that that's exactly what's happening right now, and it's actually a very bad thing. But not wasps, right? We can get rid of wasps. The uh, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, the latest study to be added to a long stack of studies about how the Earth's future is looking real bad comes to us from the science journal Biological Conservation. And the main takeaway from it is that insects are dying off at a large scale. And if the current rate continues for the next 100 years, there won't be any insects left on Earth, which is not good because we sort of need them, actually. It's, uh, well, technically, they're going to outlive all of us. If it's 100 years, we got what, till 2040? It's, the cockroaches and the wasps will figure out a way to somehow Slip through the cracks. And then it's gonna look like Starship Troopers on Earth. It, pff, Jesus. This new study is actually a meta-analysis of 73 smaller studies done over recent years that looked at populations of various individual insects, and it found that across the board, all insects are dying off at an average rate of 2.5% per year, going back around 30 years or so, which it doesn't sound like much, but stretch that out across enough time and eventually you don't have any insects left. And you know what? Bye, mosquitoes. Fuck you. Yeah, they can go. But there's some good, there's good insects. Honeybees, you can stay. Spiders, Mosquitoes, get out. Spiders, as ugly as they are. They catch, but they take care of the smaller ones. Mm-hmm. It's the circle of life. Yeah. Anyway, some of the individual examples uh, are pretty shocking, even without having to wrap your head around a 100-year time scale. For example, there's roughly half the number of bumblebees and honeybees in the U.S. today compared to 70 years ago, while we have more than twice the number of humans in the U.S. who need those bees to pollinate all of our crops mm. so we can eat. Uh, over in Puerto Rico, uh, a rainforest there was recently found to have a 98% drop in ground insects over the last 35 years. Uh, in England, between 2000 and 2009, butterflies on farmed land dropped by 58%. So a lot of dead insects. Yeah, the, the reasons for this, climate change, deforestation, and pesticides, pretty obvious. If an insect species has evolved over millions of years to survive in, in a specific climate and temperature range, and that changes in just a few short decades, they're gonna die before you can catch up. If you destroy the ecosystem where a species lives so you can harvest materials or convert it into farmland, well, they're gonna die. If you put poison on your crops and in your soil to kill bugs, bugs are gonna die. Mission accomplished. I'm doing my part. Put that off all over me. <laughs> Light that citronella candle, get away. It, but it is, a, it's a pretty straightforward problem. Yeah. It's a very simple problem with a pretty simple solution for a lot of it. Yeah, pesticides seem to be the biggest contributor here, though. Uh, turns out insect death doesn't just happen on the farms with pesticides, but also in all the nearby areas that might even be considered protected land. Uh, as for why this is really bad, there's, of course, you know, the fact that we need some species of insect to pollinate our plants and keep our soil healthy. But also, uh, there's a whole food chain here to consider. Like, if there's fewer insects around, eventually there's going to be fewer birds and small animals around, too, and uh, it's going to make its way to us at some point. Yeah. And then we're dead. Nature's all about balance, and small changes can just easily snowball into big problems. That's why we're burning the Earth alive, so we don't have to live in a world without insects and birds. Genius. If I can't live without birds to look at how beautiful and majestic they are, is there really a world that I want to live in? Yeah. Oh, the songs they sing. Oh. The songs they sing. <laughs> I don't want to live without a bird song. Burn the earth. Set it on fire and burn it up. Mm -hmm. Anyways, this, this is just one analysis with a bias towards North America and Europe where most of the data is gathered. So this subject needs to be looked at more, but even the possibility that 41% of insect species are in decline with overall insect death happening at alarming rates, uh, it should serve as yet another big wake up call about how poorly we're treating the planet. Bugs are gross and annoying, but it turns out we're kind of fucked without them. Yeah, shit. I'm sure things aren't great down there in the Amazon. People forget about the Amazon now because of the fucking Amazon.com. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Everyone, you know, I, I remember I a lot the old Amazon, Amazon <laughs> before that company came in. Uh, but but really, yeah, the Amazon is, uh, it's, it's all very fucked down there. All the governments of South America are just like, hey, don't. Don't cut the trees down. Oh, they cut them down. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Well, mm. someone. Oh, well, well, there it is. Anyway, if you plan on avoiding all this catastrophe that's heading our planet's way uh, by just going to live on another planet, well, there's been a bit of a setback there as well. Mm -hmm. and no, we're not talking about Elon Musk and SpaceX's whole Mars colonization plan, though you probably shouldn't hold your breath for that either. 
We're talking about Mars One. A very obvious scam destined for failure that has now officially failed. The fire festival in the sky. <laughs> now, to SpaceX's credit, they don't shy away from the fact that colonizing Mars is going to be a monumentally difficult task. Mars One, on the other hand, made the whole thing sound relatively easy. They were planning on having humans on Mars colonizing the planet by 2024, which is ridiculously optimistic. <laughs> yeah. And they were saying that they could do this for just $6 billion. For the same price as a border wall, we can send everyone to Mars. The ultimate. It's cheaper than a border wall. The festival experience that we're all anticipating. And Bella Hadid's going to be there. Yeah. And Kendall Jenner's going to be there. And this old man will suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Heard this was actually Pablo Escobar's planet. It's funny because the mock-ups kind of look like Fire Festival. The mock-ups from Mars One. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Mars One, it's a topic that deserves a much deeper dive than we can give it today. Uh, basically, the people behind this, are either they're either stupid as hell or the whole thing was a scam from the beginning. Sound familiar? They literally funded a 2018 unmanned mission to Mars that obviously never happened on Indiegogo. <laughs> <laughs> and that campaign, which failed at its extremely modest $400,000 goal, still managed to grift people out of 313000 If this was actually something that could be achieved by humans yeah. within, a, within a real timeline... I'm sure you, the funding would make its way to... Well, it would have already happened because the Chinese would have stole all the plans and built That's it by now. That's true, yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh, they also plan to fund their Mars mission by filming their astronaut selection process and selling it as a reality TV show. <laughs> and who fucking cares? Who would watch that? Space fans. Now we get to watch the documentary about the downfall, and that's going to be so much better. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, meanwhile, pretty much every actual expert in the various fields required to travel to Mars, uh, they all completely wrote Mars One off as a complete pipe dream that was going to probably kill people if it ever managed to launch anyone into space, which would have been fucked up. But they also basically preyed on depressed and suicidal people to begin with when they solicited public applications for their astronaut selection process for their one-way trip to Mars. Also, their selection process was uh, less about finding the best astronaut and more about just which applicants donated the most money. They had this whole fucking point system in there where, like, you'd get to the top of the list by, like, They buying... gamified it. Yeah, they gamified it. And... Oh, loot box doesn't have a trip to Mars, sorry. Yeah, they had this whole process in place. And they still never got to the point where any of these prospective astronauts actually met with Mars One in person. It was all online. It was oh, an online duh. questionnaire, a self-shot video about why you want to die on Mars, <laughs> and uh, a Skype conversation with Mars One's chief medical officer. A real human doctor. Okay, I want you to feel your balls right now. Are they okay. round? Can you play, Can you take out your boobs? Can you put your boobs in the camera? So let's do a video mass... Uh, blah, blah, blah. We have to see how the human penis and vagina reacts uh, in space, so... Yeah, so pretty sketchy. Hmm. Anyways, Mars One, it was never going to be a thing. <clears throat> they promised human colonization of Mars within a decade, when most actual experts say it could take up to a century. And they said that they could do it for a hilariously <laughs> tiny fraction of what a real Mars mission would cost. Gullible rubes bought into the nonsense, gave Mars One a bunch of money, and now they're bankrupt because the money's all been spent. Probably not on space travel. Although they probably <laughs> traveled to space in their heads. I've been to Mars many times. You guys want some moon rocks? Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, that's uh, uh, dumb and stupid. There's a lot of really good articles, like, really going into detail of, over the years, of just how bad of an idea this was. It was like, they, <laughs> these publications, they would take, they'd take this to, like, scientists, like, actual, like, people with experience and in space. And they say, why are you wasting they'd my be time? Like, Wait, <laughs> there's, like, one where they're, like, they, because they actually came up with, like, somewhat detailed plans of it but then like the second someone would look at it they'd be like oh well you're gonna starve to death in like a day like this isn't enough food but you would know that if you knew at all what the fuck you were doing it's just the the idea of the trailer for the show that they're gonna do selecting the astronauts it's like they've booked a one-way trip to mars and we get to watch the selection process as long as <laughs> as, as well as the trip to mars itself and yeah. it's just a bunch of like people that are the human personification of eeyore from yeah. Winnie the Pooh, they're just like, well, well, I hate myself, and uh, my parents hate me, and, well, I was gonna just kill myself, but I, so I thought, might as well sit in a rocket for weeks on end and eat shitty food until I inevitably die on the face of Mars, leaving uh, a sad corpse for future generations. I'm a really big fan of that one panel from Watchmen, where Dr. Manhattan's just sitting alone on Mars. Finally. Finally. Some time to read, and then he gets up and steps on his glasses. There was time. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, well, before we get into some hacking news, uh, let's take a quick break from the news to talk about this week's sponsor, uh, starting with Captera. It's 2019, so why are you still doing things the old way at work? New year, new you, right? So how about you start off the year right by replacing that software that causes you angst and agony every day with something that fits your business's needs? Well, you can by using Captera.com. Captera is the leading free online resource to help you find the best software for your business. With over 700,000 reviews of products from real software users, discover everything you need to make an informed decision. Search for more than 700 specific categories of software, everything from product management, email marketing, yoga studio management software, it's all there. You name it. No matter what kind of software your business needs, Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. Join the millions of people who use Captera each month to find the right tools for their business. Visit captera.com slash newsday for free today to find the right tools to make 2019 the year for your business. That's captera.com slash newsday, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash newsday. As well as down in the description below. Uh, yeah. Links to all these. And on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, th this episode is also sponsored by Squarespace, uh, I, it, a product that I used very recently and was very happy with. Uh, domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools, analytics, Squarespace does all of that. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. And they've just added a new feature, email campaigns. Say more, sell more, stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns, providing consistent content from website to email, powerful editing tools to make it your own, customizable layouts for any message, and mobile editing so you can send anytime, anywhere. Squarespace lets you quickly and easily create a beautiful website, whether it's for your business, your art, your products, your ideas, your fetish, you name it. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. It's got analytics that help you grow in real time. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever and they've got 24-7 award-winning customer support. So head over to squarespace.com slash newsday for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code newsday to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. squarespace.com slash newsday, offer code newsday. I used it to build my wedding website. Oh. There's something you might need to use it for. Yeah. And it was very easy and it's beautiful. The family thinks it looks very nice and they think that I worked a lot harder. You're a real whiz kid with the HTML. No. Wow. No, Grandma. It was actually Squarespace's really convenient and easy drag and drop tool. He's a genius. <laughs> Be the hero of your grandmother today. <laughs> wow. Links in the description. But let's get back to the news. Turns out those cute little scooters that you can rent with your phone can be pretty easily hacked by someone nearby. Uh, they can then cause you to seriously injure yourself or die in a road accident by controlling the scooter's brakes and acceleration. <laughs> Fun! Woo! Yes, in addition to all the other reasons to dislike the scooters that companies like Bird and Lime and even Lyft now have been flooding urban areas with, the security firm Zimperium has demonstrated a pretty terrifying flaw with one of the specific scooters used by these companies, the Xiaomi, Xiaomi, Xiaomi. Xiaomi M365. Yeah, it turns out this particular scooter has features that can be accessed via Bluetooth. And while it is password protected, the password is very easy to get around. As Imperium was able to use a denial of service attack to lock any nearby scooter within 100 meters. They were able to install malware to take control over a scooter, and they were able to target individual riders and cause the scooter to suddenly break or accelerate. <laughs> they did this? They, they have video of it. And they're not clear about whether the people they're doing it to are participants. Did they, I would assume did they, they laugh are. when someone went over the handlebars? No, they didn't cause anything, like, serious. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's real. Hmm. Anyways, Lime, they've gone on the record saying they don't actually use this model of scooter. Bird says they became aware of the bug a year ago and patched it. But all these, they all come from China. They all share a lot of the same parts. So, eh. All these scooters are telling everyone exactly where you're going <laughs> in China. <laughs> so, I, look, probably not something you need to worry about too much. Or at least not any more than you should worry about all the other ways to get killed while riding a scooter. Yeah, it's very they, easy. Yeah. Uh, cars, they're not looking out for you. They're not. Yeah. Mm, Think no. about how dangerous it is on a motorcycle in full gear, and yeah. then you're riding a scooter, and no one's wearing fucking helmets. They're like, you got your helmet yeah. that you walk around with everywhere at all times? No, bird, I don't. You want me to fucking ride this thing and give you a $1.50 or not? All right, feed me the money. All right, yeah, just don't tell anyone. <laughs> Uh, anyways, it's another uh, example of how a lot of the off-the-shelf tech has terrible security, which is scary given how much connected technology is increasingly being used for all sorts of things. For example, another security firm revealed this week that a lot of the refrigerators and freezers at places like supermarkets, hospitals, and labs are very easy to hack because the manufacturers don't force the user to switch from the default password. 
This is basically the same dumb flaw that allows you to look at thousands of random home security cameras, but actually much worse. Because in the case of refrigeration, someone could make a bunch of food go bad or worse. Yeah, if it's like a hospital, yeah. they're like, all right, the heart that you need to live has finally arrived. It's in that fridge over there. Let's go check on it. Oh, and it melted. Well, now that Sorry, it's at room sir. temperature, three, three minutes on each side, and mm. it's ready to go medium rare. Mm. Anyways, accessing these systems, uh, it also usually gives a nice detailed floor plan of the buildings that these refrigerators are in. <laughs> oh, great. Very cool. I saw a great, there was a great joke that was like, why are you freaking out? No, someone just, someone just killed me in Fortnite. They were playing on like a smart fridge. It was way better worded, but uh, you know, they poured it to anything these mm, days. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. In other cybersecurity news, an email provider was hacked this week and the hacker was able to just completely delete all the data across its entire infrastructure. Wow. So they're gone. Uh, VF Email, the company that got deleted, was founded back in 2001 in response to the rampant malware being passed around via email at the time. I remember it well. It offered what was, at the time, a pretty advanced solution to this, uh, integrating virus scanning into the email system itself so that users could feel safe opening their email. Wow, revolutionary. Well, 18 years later, the hackers have gotten the last laugh by just completely er erasing VF Email's entire business. It's unclear how many people were actually using VF Email, but all their shit's gone now. Poof. Uh, VF Email's founder wrote on Twitter, Yes, VF Email is effectively gone. It will likely not return. I never thought anyone would care about my labor of love so much that they'd want to completely and thoroughly destroy it. He said, typing through tears. <laughs> wow. That's sad. Does VF stand for virus free? Oh, yeah, probably. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, their website, like, to this day, still look, it looks like it was made in 2001. I don't think they had a lot of clients, but it's, yeah, just boom. It's all gone. It's me, damn it. I feel bad. Yeah. yeah. My labor of love. Yeah. Gone forever. He wasn't in it for the money. No, he obviously He wanted to not. make a, a safe, friendly email service for everyone. Google offered to buy me for a billion dollars. <laughs> I, I said, said no. no. It's against my principles. Hmm. Poor guy. <laughs> Anyways, also in hacking over in Switzerland, they're planning on making the extremely risky switch over to online voting but they've got a plan for avoiding the almost certain cybersecurity catastrophe that this would create. They're gonna do a bug bounty and give money to anyone who can expose vulnerabilities in their system. They're calling it the public intrusion test, and anyone who successfully exposes a vulnerability can get awarded up to $50,000. Online voting, probably still a terrible idea, at least yeah. right now. Also, it's like, oh, we'll give you $50,000, and then someone from Russia, it's like, I'm just not going to we'll, report it. We'll give you $100,000 oh, if yeah. you give it to us. You see the uh, the kid who exposed the FaceTime bug? It was like, they flew him out to Apple headquarters and like gave him a bug bounty technically. And I'm just like, he was like 15. I'm like, what are you doing publicizing this kid's face and name, you weirdos? Yeah. Like, okay, he's a kid, first of all. Second of all, there's probably a lot of people online that are unhappy that he now has a name and face to the person who exposed the flaw that they were probably exploiting happily. Yeah. Yeah. It's like winning the lottery when it's like, here you go. And he lives right over there. And here's his house. <laughs> Probably won't live there long, am I right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's don't, why, I just don't get it, especially a 15 year old. Like, yeah. Sounds like a bad idea. Probably. Maybe I have a, a less faith in people than I should, but I wouldn't. I'd be like, nah, you, give me the money, but just. You yeah, know, don't put my don't face put my and name <laughs> all over the internet. Glad to be a part of helping you guys close some security loopholes. But, yeah. Uh, I appreciate the gesture, Tim. Yeah. Anyways, in other non-hacking news, we sort of just assumed that once AT&T got called out for lying to its users about 5G, uh, that they were just going to cut it out because it was embarrassing. But it turns out, no. And now they're being sued by a competitor over it. Uh, for a while now, AT&T users have noticed a little icon at the top of their phone screen that says 5G with a little tiny E next to it that you can barely see. You'd be forgiven for thinking this means your phone is on a 5G network because it literally says that you are, but alas, you are not. In fact, no one's on 5G yet. AT&T, however, has a, they, they have something called 5GE. It's just a name, guys. Or oh, geez, 5G with a tiny E. Yeah. It's just a slightly better version of 4G LTE. Pronounce 5G. 5G. People just keep saying it wrong. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much the same as what every other player in the mobile business has, and they're all mad at AT&T for it because it's intentionally misleading. Well, Sprint has now officially sued AT&T over 5GE, 
saying that they're lying to consumers to gain an unfair advantage over their competition by making it seem like they've got a next generation phone network that's better than anyone else's when it's pretty much exactly the same. Except I'd say that Sprint is arguably worse than everyone's. But, yeah. So, Sprint, but you're good, one to talk. Good for them. Uh, and putting together a lawsuit, Sprint even ran a survey in which they found that 54% of consumers thought AT&T's 5GE was the same or better than real 5GE. Well, it's better than 5G Extreme. Yeah. It seems like a pretty open and shut case, but uh, the world's fucked, so. Yeah, Sprint, they just need to make their own, like, 5GX. It was 5G Extreme. Sprint's whole thing was, like, they really rode, uh, like, a lot of goodwill and customers off of the early 2000s where their phones could essentially act as walkie-talkies. Oh, yeah. So a lot of, like, people in, uh, in like, blue-collar business and stuff. Yeah. And they, they just stuck around with Sprint. Yeah. But now they're, now they're just... Their service sucks. I had them for like three years and I was miserable. It's not a sprint. It's more like a crawl. Mm, yeah. It's a good joke. Anyways, one last thing. Uh, some of you are young as hell and grew up on the internet. So we highly recommend that you go take a look at the official website for Captain Marvel. The movie takes place in the 90s. And the website is spot on scary accurate to how the internet looked back then. Uh, which, in a word was hideous. This is what every website looked like. There were GIFs everywhere, texts that hurt to read, way too many colors. An under construction sign. Yeah. Uh, if you were alive and on the internet back then, this site has the potential to make you flash back to the most awkward moments of your youth, so be careful. Or you could just go visit the Space Jam website. Still up and, it's oh, still there. Up and I, I looked, yeah. That's real. Yeah. But uh, yeah, check this out. Uh, use this as an opportunity to see how good we all have it nowadays because the internet used to be ugly. It used to be slow. No one knew what it was for. Yeah. And that was not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's it for uh, this week's episode of Tech News Day. Check out the sponsors. Links below. Uh, hit those up. Thank you for sponsoring the show. We have two other episodes you need to check out right here. We have a brand new episode of News Dump and a brand new episode where we talk about how Crackdown 3 should be canceled because it's sad. Sad. Crack sad. Hit up our Patreon. Join on YouTube. We love you. Bye-bye.